What's going on guys, Arrow here, and welcome back to another video. Now in today's video, guys, Generation 9 is just a couple hours away from the time that I upload this video. In fact, it might even be out for you by the time that you're watching this, as it's probably already going to be out in other parts of the world, but I know for the US it's still not going to be out yet. However, I figured I would make a video since if you guys didn't know, I actually beat the games already and have even talked a little bit about them in my last video where I answered some questions that a lot of you guys had, but I figured since I beat this game and I already kind of know a lot about what happens and kind of how this game works, I feel like I should make a tips and tricks type of video to really help you guys get the best possible experience you can out of this game and not really make the same mistakes that I didn't know about when I was playing through the game. Now real quick before we get started, I just want to let you guys know that I am partnered with Best Buy now and so there will be links below in the description and the pinned comment to Pokemon Scarlet, Pokemon Violet and even the double pack. If you click those links and then pre-order from there, you can really support me and help out the channel a lot so I would really appreciate it and Best Buy is awesome because they'll actually give you free shipping and send the game right to your house day one so if you want to play the games the day that they're available and have them delivered right to your doorstep, then definitely consider pre-ordering from the links below in the description or the pinned comment. I would really appreciate it. And these games are looking pretty cool, so I know a lot of you guys definitely want them. Alright, so the first tip that I have here is for anybody who is buying the physical version of the game, and that is to absolutely 100% download the day one update as soon as you put the cartridge into your Switch. I know it's very tempting to just click start software and jump right into the game and begin playing, but the thing about this game is that maybe you've already seen from reviews and the clips on Twitter and people talking about it, but this game definitely has some performance issues and they are very, very evident if you play it on version 1.0.0 and that is what every cartridge is going to come if you buy it physically so you're gonna have to download the day one patch first because I've tried playing this game on version 1.0.0 and I will say it's just very inconsistent there are so many frame rate drops the game is stuttery it's laggy sometimes it even crashes characters animations look a little weird sometimes like it, there's just a lot of weird things that happen if you play it on the base version that it comes in so definitely just download the patch, it only takes a couple minutes and I guarantee you're going to have a much better time. Obviously if you play this game digitally it should already have it downloaded by itself so you don't really have to worry about this. Now as you're adventuring throughout this game there are going to be tons of Pokeball items that are going to be all around the world. However there's also going to be little sparkling items which are going to be hidden in like grassy areas and stuff. And these are also items that you really want to pick up because a lot of times these items can have some rare things like nuggets or it could even be just something really good like an EXP candy or something like that. So definitely just if you see some sparkling items try to pick them up as many as you can. You're always going to see them and by picking them all up you're going to have some really good items. Now like Pokemon Legends Arceus, you have the freedom to move the right joystick and rotate the camera whenever you're in the middle of a battle, but a trick that a lot of people don't know about is that you can actually click in the R stick whenever you're in a battle and it'll reset the camera to that traditional position that you have from old Pokemon games where it shows you the back of your Pokemon facing against the opposing Pokemon, so if you really like that type of view, you can always get it. Now this game has two types of currency. You've got your normal Poke Dollars, which you'll get from just beating trainers in the game, but you can also get a new currency called LP, which stands for League Points. And throughout the world of the game, you're gonna see a lot of these kind of like raid dens or terror raid dens, which are gonna be like shimmering and shining all around the world. And the thing is, you don't even have to do the entire raid battle, but as long as you go to one of these and you press A and then you press B, doing that, just being near there, is gonna get you 8,000 LP. So you can pretty much get LP just doing that to every single one that you see shining around the world and that's basically like getting a free thousand dollars in the game because everything can be bought using LP or Poke Dollars and it would be at the same price as it normally costs. One of the cool things about this game is that unlike Pokemon Legends Arceus, there's actually no fall damage. So if you're on a cliff and you see an item below you, you can totally just jump down and get that item. And if you accidentally fall off a cliff or something, there's even a shortcut prompt which will pop up, which lets you press the Y button to end up back where you came from. So if you see an item below you, you can even jump off, get the item, and still be within enough time to press the Y button and end up back to the cliff where you came from and even keep your item. Now one of the most interesting changes that they've made to the gameplay inside of this game is how every single trainer battle is optional. None of the trainers are ever going to see you run by them and be like, yo, you're going to battle me right now. It's up to you to go there and press A to battle them. So a lot of times you might be just thinking, well, I don't want to battle them. I'm going to skip them. But I'm going to tell you guys right now that battling the trainers is actually really good. And there's an incentive to do so because at Pokemon centers, you're going to see staff from the Pokemon League, which are going to ask you if you've challenged some trainers within a certain area or a certain route. And if you do that and if you challenge the same amount of people that they've wanted you to challenge they're going to give you some really good rewards like having tms that can give you some useful moves like thunder wave and stuff so definitely battle the trainers and get these good items 
Sometimes while you're out adventuring in the world, you might come across these other trainers which have set up picnics and definitely go to these and interact with them as much as you can because these basically act as rest spots which will fully heal your Pokemon and bring everybody back to full HP and restore all their PP and everything. So it's really useful, especially if you're out in the world, like really deep into some area and there's not a nearby Pokemon Center or something and you don't want to kind of go back to a town or something to have to end up back here again and you want to keep exploring and finding items and rare Pokemon, definitely take advantage of these picnic trainers. Speaking of healing, one of the things that Pokemon games have always had is if you want to heal your Pokemon, you have to go into your bag yourself and manually select the potions and antidotes and things that you want to use to heal your Pokemon. But inside of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, there's actually a brand new auto heal feature which uses the best items in your bag by itself. And all you have to do is just open up the menu, go to your Pokemon and press the minus button and it'll instantly heal your Pokemon with the best possible items that it can use. Now like Pokemon Legends Arceus, backstrikes are going to be returning from the game, but they're not as satisfying as how they were in that game to pull off, but you're still going to be able to catch Pokemon off guard if they're unaware that you're nearby, or you see a wild Pokemon that's sleeping, you can creep up on them and throw a Pokeball by holding the ZL button to target, and then the ZR button to throw your own Pokemon at them, and if you hit them from the back, you're going to be able to initiate a battle and catch them off guard, and doing that, they're not going to attack you for two turns, so you basically will be able to do that against strong Pokemon so you can have a chance to actually catch them. Now speaking of using the ZR button, that is also how you're going to be able to use this Let's Go feature, which lets you send in the first Pokemon that you have in your party out into the world with you, and they'll kind of follow you around, but also be able to take advantage by killing some wild Pokemon, gaining some EXP for everyone, and also collecting nearby items and stuff, so it's always useful to have this feature, and the cool thing is that these Pokemon are going to be getting less experience from doing this, you don't have to worry about like getting super over leveled by just using this feature, but what's also really good is that this feature is just based around the types of your Pokemon and not really the movesets that your Pokemon have. So for example, a Pokemon that I had was Gyarados on my team and this is a Gyarados that was level 24 and it literally knew no attacks except for Tackle, Splash, and Bite. However, you can see it here taking on Skiddos and other Pokemon and it actually plays the super effective sound effect because I have a flying type and it has an advantage against these grass Pokemon. So even though I don't have any flying type attacks, the Gyarados is still able to easily take out this Pokemon so it's a really good way of being able to level up and grind your Pokemon, so definitely take advantage of this feature. Now while you're exploring throughout the game, you might come across these glowing stakes which are going to be stuck into the ground, and if you see these, definitely just go up to them and press A and interact with them, because these are going to be useful if you want to unlock the sub-legendary quest to being able to get all of the other sub-legendaries which are a part of the game. And the thing about this is that you don't even have to be in the post game to do them, you can do the sub-legendary quest whenever you want, so you can even do this before you see the credits for the game, or you could do it in the post game, it's really up to you, but in order to do it you are going to have to find all of the hidden stakes which are going to be throughout the region and the thing is you don't really want to kind of just leave them there and then have to come back and find them so if you do see them just like how they were in Pokemon Legends Arceus with the Spiritomb Wisps if you see them just definitely go up to them and interact with them so that you can have them. Now speaking of hidden things in the world, one of the brand new Gen 9 Pokemon is this new Pokemon called Gimmigool, which is basically like a little coin Pokemon that is hidden all around the world in so many different places of the region. But the thing is, if you want to evolve this Pokemon, you actually need to find 1000 coins of this Pokemon which are scattered in so many different locations all around the region and it's going to be a very difficult task to do. If you thought gathering like 160 Wisps or whatever to get Spiritomb and Legends Arceus was hard, try getting a thousand of these little coins that are scattered all around this entire open world region. So the thing is, you're always going to see this little critter all around like little signs and stuff. You definitely see them a lot in like the ruins areas where you see like these stone things. So if you see them, definitely just go and interact with them because they'll definitely give you some Gimmigool coins and you want to try to have as many of these as you can. If you find the chest form of this Pokemon, you can actually get 50 if you defeat it in battle. But if you want to evolve the Pokemon, you're going to need a lot of these Gimmigool coins. So if you see the little guy, definitely just go and get him. And finally, the last tip that I have here is inside of the first major city that you get to in the game, the one that has the school, there's actually going to be a really cool little shop that you're going to find known as Deli Bird Delights. And the thing is, this shop I'm pretty sure gets upgraded throughout the game the more progress that you make. But the really cool thing is that this shop has so many useful items that you're going to be able to use throughout your adventure. It has Soothe Bells if you want to be able to raise the friendship of Pokemon fast to evolve Pokemon like Riolu into Lucario. You can find like evolutionary items like Everstones and stuff. 
There's EV training items, stuff that you can use to raise the Pokemon's type advantages, and a lot of other useful items. So you can buy all of these just using Poke Dollars or LP, so it's a very useful shop to go to, and I definitely recommend it. But yeah, there you go guys. Those are pretty much all the tips that I would give to anybody who's going to be starting Pokemon Scarlet and Pokemon Violet. If you guys enjoyed this video, then definitely be sure to click that like button and also comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this. Do you guys have any tips of your own that you would share? Definitely be sure to comment them down below and let me know. If you're new to this channel, then please be sure to subscribe. I'm definitely going to have some more Pokemon content in the future, so definitely be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on that. Click on that bell to become a part of the notification squad. Go follow me on Twitter at @actualarrow so you can be featured in videos, and also join my Discord server as well. We've got a bunch of people in there who are always talking about Pokemon and Smash Bros and Nintendo, so definitely be sure to join that. And yeah, that's pretty much it. Thank you so much for watching.